Welcome to Ascende Superius. This reflection is on Saint Maximilian Kolbe, entitled, My Name is Kolbe. Greater love than this no man hath, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13. The life of Saint Maximilian Kolbe is one of obscurity to modern man and the religious who build their life upon abstract ascetics and philosophies. The very inclinations of St. Kolbe and the virtues he wrought are considered weak and inhuman for today's standards, even though the cause of history that he found himself in, and eventually died under, is worshipped as a grave injustice calling for rectification through human means of respect and sensibility, while ignoring the innate tenets of charity which God inscribes on the heart of every man through his law, and was exemplified in the lives of those saints who died under the Nazi and communist oppression. It is by the saints' witness that God's love was able to penetrate even the most hardened hearts. It is not difficult to imagine the great spiritual desolation a soul felt in the concentration camp, let alone a despondency which overwhelmed the mind as imminent death prevailed. Our Lord tells us in the Gospel not to fear those who can kill your mortal body, rather those who can kill your soul. When we allow others to rob us of our faith, we have lost something greater than life itself, for without sanctifying grace, we are no good to ourselves or to others, as our efforts are meaningless without the supernatural aid of Almighty God. Without grace, our merit to hang on to our lives amidst the inevitable is in vain, and we naturalize the soul to the inverted mantra of survival of the fittest. We toil for our bread, and we exhaust ourselves from the rest that is given by him to the beloved. Instead of loving, we hate, and we give ourselves not to the Lord of lords, but to the prince of the world, Satan, who persecutes God's saints without cause. Sainthood and its effectiveness of sacrifice are anonymous to the world. It is hidden. Only by faith are the deeds of Christ in his saints perceived, as they are ordinarily extraordinary. The great apostolic life which St. Colby led during his time as head of the Immaculata compares very little to what he wrought as an altar Christus in the Auschwitz concentration camp. It is by our Lord's prompting of the sacrificial nature, which was enjoined to St. Colby at his ordination, culminating at that moment when Maximilian Colby offered up his life in exchange for Francisek of Wannesick. If it were not for the witness of the man who was spared, there would be no account of the heroic deed which took place. The fact that St. Colby's relics were cremated and demolished is the deceit of the devil trying to cover up and deface the identity and the image of God in human beings, but most of all to emaciate the holiness of God lived and breathed in men during this earthly pilgrimage, particularly amidst suffering. How cruel and demonic are men who use the methods of torture and death as a means to dominate and subserviate other men. Yet even more so revolting is when men adorn themselves in a world of pleasures and comforts, in abhorrence of suffering, and dare to decide who should suffer at their own hands. St. Maximilian Kolbe teaches us the way of the cross. 
By his example, the words of St. Paul resonate true in that, quote, The word of the cross is foolishness to them that perish, but to them that are saved it is the power of God, unquote. Taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. It is by the cross that suffering transforms into a positive thing. Death is no longer death. The cross is the means that translates our suffering into something valuable and holy when consecrated to God. All of who we think we are and what we have worked for and our lives to achieve is put to the test when we meet the exhausting trials of our lives. Our cross confronts us asking, Who are you? The person of God responds without timidity, answering distinctly by name. The true saint, so convinced and compelled, takes on the responsibility which Christ excites in him, being dedicated to the heart of hearts and the spirit of spirits, reciprocating love for love. This becomes the whole destiny of the saint as he continually answers to the action of Christ's love in his heart, pursuing to know more intimately the inexorable demands of charity. It is through the means of our persecutors, even those whom we love, those who say they love us, that God tests our fidelity through the utmost debilitating circumstances. The time has come for that cross which you have been carrying to now be the instrument which you will be affixed to. To quote Thomas Merton, he says, If, therefore, we desire to be what we are meant to be, and if we become what we are supposed to become, the interrogation of suffering will call forth from us both our own name and the name of Jesus, and we will find we have begun to work out our destiny, which is to be at once ourselves and Christ. Unquote. God asked through the mouth of the Nazi prison guard to the saint, Who are you? The saint naturally replied, My name is Colby.